In this video, we go to Toulouse for an AvGeek's dream day. We get rare access to the A350 final assembly line and learn how to put the wings on. We tour a flight test aircraft. We stand on top of a plane. We go inside the cabin mock-up center, which is normally off limits to mortals. And in his Flight Radar 24 YouTube debut, Ian Pechnik climbs down a ladder. My proposal is we go through the cabin okay. quickly, so you still cannot take pictures, but at least we, you can okay. cross over. Et on descend uh, porte because I have the access to the gate. <laughs> yes. okay. Et on descend, et après le reste en... okay. Last week, we were invited to Toulouse to attend the Airbus Summit, which gathered press and industry people to discuss the path to sustainable aviation. Bonjour, bienvenue à bord à l'Airbus 320neo de EasyJet. Perfect. Merci beaucoup. Pas de quoi. Merci. <laughs> Some important conversations and even arguments were had. You can hear more about that side of things on our podcast Av Talk. We'll put a link to that episode down below. But the final day took us deep into Airbus's extensive operation here. We got the sort of look behind the scenes that I've dreamed about since I was a kid. Here's what we saw. First up, the A350 final assembly line. So I'm coming to all of you from a place I never thought I would be standing. I'm standing on top of the, the fuselage, well not quite on top of, but nearly as on top of as you can get, of a fuselage of an A350 under construction. We're in um, station 40, which is where they attach the wings to the aircraft, they attach the main landing gear to the aircraft, and they attach the tail fin to the aircraft. And so what you're seeing here is the uh, carbon fiber skin. And we learned today, I had not known this, that the brown color on the uh, A350 fuselage before it's painted is due to the bronze that they put in, in a, in a small film, and then coat it with a, uh, a clear coat resin so that the fuselage can actually conduct lightning strikes away from the aircraft because otherwise carbon fiber doesn't conduct electricity and that would be dangerous for the aircraft. The flight deck area and, and the radome area are green and those are made of aluminum and we got to touch it and you can really feel the difference between the, the smoothness of the, the, carbon, the resin coated carbon fiber skin versus the um, primer coated uh, aluminum from the, from the flight deck. So very cool stuff and we're, we're, we're standing on top of an airplane. down here uh, standing underneath A350 now and uh, you can kind of go up the different levels to get into the cargo compartment. We walked through the cabin. Uh, we weren't allowed to take pictures or video of that unfortunately but what a fascinating thing to see them in the middle of installing all the electrical cabling. Some of the overhead bins are already in. It's kind of uh, surprising actually that this plane is going to roll out of here on Monday. Being inside the cargo compartment was amazing as well. You see some of the fire suppression systems, some of the some of the huge piping at the back, everything looks so fresh and new. Uh, the whole plane, I mean, it's just stunning. So they they set up a, a special station for us to view what we could see about how they put together, the, how they join the wing to the, the fuselage, in, into the wing box and the fuselage. And it turns out that this is what you've got. And these are what hold the wing to the actual fuselage. And so they're between 12 and 25 millimeters. These are not heavy or large bolts by any stretch of the imagination. So I, I asked Airbus this question years ago and no one was able to find, find me an answer. Uh, why, when it comes into the factory, is the, the radome nose of the A350 red? So I think the only answer is someone found it funny in Saint-Nazaire. So actually they order, it's only a transparent protective film that is red and make it like a clown nose. We remove <laughs> it and then it's painted so it doesn't stay red. 
It's an incredibly complex and fine-tuned process putting together each one of these. The engineers here explained that they were initially worried about getting things right with the carbon fiber used throughout the A350, a material that's strong and light, but also sensitive to stress. So they developed a process to use laser tracker measurements to ensure everything fits together precisely, with a maximum variance of four millimeters. It's something we are very, very proud of. It's since, so you see, we are almost on, air, or we have passed aircraft number 500. As my colleague mentioned, we delivered 440 aircraft. But today we receive element, I think we are on 503 or something like it. And since we have never any issue, nor on the fuselage junction or the wing junction, it was something we are very afraid of. In case it, it was out of tolerance, there are always a way to repair. You can uh, uh, remove some part to reduce the shape, but we knew it will take time. And in the final assembly line, it's where the, 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 the cost hours is the highest, of course. It's not we are lazy, but here, the less we do, the better. As if all that wasn't enough, we then headed over to see an A350-1000 flight test aircraft, where one of the lead flight test engineers talked us through the ongoing program. All the scenes which are arranged are dedicated to flight test installation. during the test. Uh, this is a typical flight test device which is installed and all the tail is reinforced inside. Huh? French, you know. Uh, I read on the book. When we perform a test, usually we are three in the cockpit, two pilots and me in the middle. And in the back, flight test engineer station, you have one engineer dedicated to one attached chapter, which is the engine, the air conditioning, the electricity, it depends, hydraulics. So if I show you the electricity here, and what we present to the pilot. For the pilot, this is the screens that you have forward. It's uh -huh. very synoptic, okay? Here you can see we have a detail of the electric wow. system. Wow. Here. We have what we call a load bench. As you can see, this aircraft is not a cabin aircraft. Uh, so in order to be representative of the electrical load that you have in a commercial aircraft, uh, with uh, the IFE in the back, all the screen, the galley, uh, in the galley you have the fridge, you have the oven, uh, you have many electrical things. So we have load benches. Here we have only two. When we perform some tests, we go to maximum load of the variable frequency generator on the engine. Nice visitor, and after they give me some money, I put it in here. All right. I, I, I have so many visitors, and you, they are, they you are so say. happy that, that I need to have the money. That's your, your tip jar. That's yeah. <laughs> okay, while well, going inside the cargo, you will see. 
When we were outside, I told you about the tail skid, the tail bumper. You will see inside the reinforcement that we have. We're in the back of the A350-1000 flight test aircraft. You can see there's there's no cabin whatsoever. And we're actually in the area of the, the aircraft that goes down into the rear cargo bay uh, from the main cabin level. And so I'm gonna climb down this ladder and, and have all sorts of fun right now. the bulkhead as you have seen uh, I think uh, you realize that it was the bulkhead when we were down so this is uh, the off part and which is the end of the pressurized part of the aircraft Finally, we headed over to the Airspace Cabin Mock-Up Center. This place is legendary because it's really rare to get to see inside, unless you're buying an Airbus. Every plane they offer is represented here, and they're all real aircraft, just without wings and stuff. Now this is a very cool thing, and apparently they don't often let people come in here with cameras, and they've done it for us. I'm not sure exactly why we get the privilege, but we're in Airbus's Airspace Cabin Mock-Up Center, where they have every single one of their aircraft models lined up in a row, uh, full size, true to life, you know, not a fake thing, really manufactured as it would feel on board these airplanes. And right now we're on the A220, um, and this was actually the flight test aircraft, as it turns out. Uh, so it's the real deal, even though it's sunk down into a floor for easy access now. And they basically put a bunch of different types of seats on here. It's where customers, airlines, and others can come and, and check out how they might want to outfit their cabin. So I only wish that I was in the middle of uh, picking out the cabin for my own A220. That's sadly not the case right now, but uh, maybe someday, right? This is on a remote to flying. Ah. That's why usually we have luggage in there. But ah. it's a... Oh, didn't see you there. Hello. It's, it's a, 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 I would say a marketing visit. Yeah. Then we have um, a tour like we do today and spend an, uh, half an hour on, on an aircraft like this. Um, but sometimes they have specific questions about layout definition and things like that, you know? Yeah. And then maybe you spend on details a lot longer. Yeah? How so, to rearrange, how to optimize their layout, what seats do fit, and things like that. Um, so it's de depending on the purpose. And then do you put together kind of options where it's like we suggest these seats with these seats and these screens, or is it just complete, like whatever you want, and you choose? <laughs> Actually, I think we, we try to anticipate. Yeah, we see yeah. their markets, we see their customers, usually they have layouts and other aircrafts. So we see um, what is um, the segment they want to address. Uh, okay. uh, and then we, we, of course, can propose a couple of, is that a two-class layout? Yeah, is it a three-class or maybe a one-class? Yeah? Yeah. Really depending on the market that they are flying in. And, and then it's a lot about the individual choices yeah? um, in terms of trim and finish, because this is a, a brand aspect. Yeah? And so we try to create a platform for all our aircraft, um, for all the airspace cabins, that are flexible for customization. <laughs> A330 cabin demonstrator. They don't fail to make it look very luxurious and pleasant with the, with the blue and pink lights and the glasses and bottles set up. It just looks like a really nice plane to spend time in. And here we have a few different business class seats. Obviously I'd happily take any of these seats for a long flight. This is pleasant, nicely separated from the aisle and uh, good room for the feet. Nice thing about this one is that uh, alternating pairs in the center sit close together so if you're with someone you want to
be closer to them. Sometimes in business class it's not possible these days. This seat is one of the weirder business class seats because you sit in something like a pair here and, and one seat when it reclines to flat goes up while the other one goes down. So you end up on two different levels, which is kind of awkward whether you're with someone you know or you're with a stranger, I think. of the airspace A320 NEO section. It's not one of the full cabin mock-ups, it's just a, a new demonstration. This cabin's actually already flying on certain airlines like the JetBlue A321LR. Uh, but what they've got is airlines come and they see what Airbus has to offer, like a new business class cabin. Uh, I guess you could call this a, a suite uh, with the, the door. Now this one's actually a huge amount of space and then you can come back here and, and check out the economy seats you can have a look at overhead bins you can see all types of projections on the on the ceiling and these are all led lights so airbus says you can do 16 million separate colors though we really have only seen airlines do well blue and and this pinkish purplish going on but you could do 16 million colors and why not you should get your money's worth right? exactly what's the laboratory gonna look like uh, that that one's pretty spacious this has been the, the perfect avgeek day we got to go inside the a350 uh, we got to go on top of the a350 we got to play with the tools that put the a350 together we uh, had lunch underneath the flight path I wish I was flying home on this particular that would be plane. Do you think we can just back it out of the... <laughs> I don't know if it has wheels. Probably or wings, <laughs> or engines, or anything. The wings might be an issue. You could tow it home. But we know how to join the wings to a body now. That's so. true. We learned how to do that. And uh, this is the first time that you're in one of these videos. It is, so. yes. I'm super excited to be here. So that's exciting. So uh, in Toulouse, uh, for Flight Radar 24, I'm Gabriel Lee, and this is... Ian Pechnik. See you soon. <laughs>